It's all good? Good. Okay, so theory is a well-tested explanatory framework, not yet been falsified. Everything in science is held relatively tentatively. Even a physicist would have to say at rock bottom, yeah, I hold heliocentrism tentatively. It may yet be shown that there's a more f a fuller explanation of reality that we are not yet aware of that will someday replace heliocentrism. Now, whatever the new thing that comes along is, it's still going to have to deal with all the data that's been accumulated and all the predictions and tests that have been successful to date. It can't simply just shove that off the table. It still has to make sense of the body of evidence that's already been accumulated. One example in science along those lines is actually Einstein and relativity. Newtonian mechanics, sort of Newton's ideas about physics, force equal, you know, F equals MA and all the stuff maybe you learned in high school. Strictly speaking, Einstein overthrew that. Strictly speaking, Newtonian mechanics are false in view of Einstein's understanding of general and special relativity. Now, did we completely throw Newton out the window? Well, no. Students in high school are still taught Newtonian mechanics. Because at speeds significantly lower than the speed of light, Newtonian mechanics works just fine. There's no problem there. But strictly speaking, once you get close to the speed of light, Newtonian mechanics doesn't work anymore. Einstein's relativities, special and general relati relativity, encompass Newtonian mechanics. So it's a more complete description of reality. But Newton's ideas are still valid, but they are only valid within a certain sphere, uh, a certain scale. So did Einstein overthrow Newton? Yes and no. It's still, re still valid, and it's been incorporated into the new theory. Just have to keep your speed down. That's right. No speeding, son. Keep it below, uh, keep it below the speed of light. Okay. Okay. So theory, well-tested explanatory framework. Evolution is if you'll pardon the expression, only a theory. In that sense, evolution is an explanatory framework that has withstood repeated experimentation and testing. It's been around for about 150 years. Darwin published his Origin of Species in 1859, although he, ha he ha held his ideas for some decades before that, but kept them private. So this idea has been around for quite some time. Since that time, it has been tested rigorously. Don't worry, the house won't hold yeah. <laughs> In case we have a power outage. Yeah. Well, in that case, we'll just have to sit around and talk without the, without the pictures. <laughs> so the issue is, is that we've been taking this idea and running with it as long since that time. Since Darwin put his ideas out, scientists have been saying, okay, interesting idea. If that's the case, if that's the explanatory framework, well, then this should be the case. Let's test it. Well, then this should be the case. So let's test it. And so far, we've had a 150-year run with this theory, and so far we haven't found any evidence to say, okay, we need to reject the hypothesis and, and rework this. Scientists are very pragmatic. They will use whatever explanatory framework has the greatest predictive power. And evolutionary theory has tremendous predictive power. You can use it to make incredibly detailed predictions that are readily borne out by experimental evidence. So it's had a good run. It may well be that in the future something will supplant it, as Einstein and Newton, like we just talked about. But at present, it's what we have, and it seems to be working, and it, we're running with it. Obviously, some details have changed. Darwin didn't have the whole picture in 1859. We now have techniques available to him of which he could only dream. Nevertheless, his core idea that modern species are derived from ancestral species through descent with modification remains intact. That basic core idea that all species on the planet are related and share ancestors, if you track it back far enough, that core idea remains and is supported by evidence. Okay. Evolution, as any good scientific theory does, readily makes new testable hypotheses and predictions based on new observations. Where we're going to go now is we're going to look at genomics. Genomics is this new science of comparing DNA sequences of different organisms to one another. We were very interested in genomic sequences of our own species. The Human Genome Project was completed sort of between 2000 and 2003. 
that effort left behind a lot of infrastructure. We now know how to sequence genomes quite quickly. We know how to do the computer work. We know we actually have the facilities for doing large-scale sequencing. In the absence of a human genome to sequence, this equipment has now become available to sequence other things. So biologists are basically saying, okay, let's just take species of the day and kind of run it through the sequencer. It's not quite that simple, but that's basically the idea. So we've been, in the last five to six years, we've had, as biologists, we now have a new wealth of data to look at. We can now compare the DNA sequences of a large number of species to each other. Now, that allows one to test evolutionary theory based on those new observations. The new observation is we have genomes to look at from all these different organisms. Those organisms were proposed to be related based on other criteria, bone structure, where they're found on the planet, biogeography, and such. We can now take this new data and say, well, does it fit the pattern or not? Are organisms that we would predict to be related based on other criteria, are they more similar at the genomic level? Do they have features that are readily explained by common ancestry? Or is it a complete mess? Does it overthrow Darwin's ideas? So again, evolution is sort of up on the block to see if it can pass the new test as new evidence comes in. Does it fit the pattern of what we expect? Okay. So when one looks at the human genome and compares it to the chimpanzee genome, the chimpanzee genome was completed in late 2005. We now have the complete sequence of chimpanzees and we have the complete sequence of humans. We can now look at those two genomes and ask evolutionary questions. Yeah, Terry. Just the point, does everyone understand what a genome is? It's a good, yeah, thanks for flagging that. Genome is just the complete genetic chromosomal DNA sequence of a given organism. A genome is kind of like the instruction set for how you build an organism. It comes to us as linear pieces of DNA, which is just a chemical, essentially. It has different components that are arranged in a specific sequence. So every chromosome is one big long string of DNA. It comes, there's sort of four, you can think of it kind of like Lego. Lego with four different colored building blocks and the specific sequence of those different colored blocks specify a code of information. Another analogy would be to say it's kind of like an encyclopedia set. Okay? The human encyclopedia set has 23 books in it. We have 46 chromosomes in total. They come in 23 pairs. So each of those is a set of instructions, a code in a sequence that you can read in a sequence. There's only four letters, as you, as you, if you will.